Hello, 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 beautiful people. Welcome into uh, Wednesday night Bible chat. I'm excited. I'm Pastor Emmy, and I'm excited to be teaching everyone tonight on secrets of intercessory prayer. So I want you guys to come on in, tag some people, share this video, let people know that we are on tonight. I'm super uh, pumped about tonight. Um, and let's get this party started. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, as you guys are coming in, go ahead and um, shout out where you're tuning in from tonight so that I can see you well. Hi, Miracle. How are you? How are you? Hey, Minister Kempton, I see you popping on. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Man, as you guys are coming on, wow, what an awesome prayer call we just had. I want to encourage everybody to make sure that you hop on Wednesday nights, um, the one hour before Bible study starts for corporate intercession. We have some amazing intercessors um, that pray. It's a great way for you to plug in and get power. Hi, James. Hi, Miss Shawanda. How are you doing? Yes, let's get these numbers up. Let's get these numbers up as you're coming in. I just want to give you guys some quick updates. So guys, April 2021, we are shifting. April 2021, we are shifting. Um, we're shifting times. We're shifting times. We're going into um, uh, new Bible study prayer and service times. Okay. So I don't want you to miss that. So starting April, 2021, we are changing service times, Bible time, Bible study times, as well as our, um, corporate prayer times. So, um, our new service times on Sunday is going to 1130, 1130, starting in April, starting April, Easter Sunday, we're going to 1130 AM. Uh, in person and online. <clears throat> and then for our Bible studies, we are moving from 9 o'clock p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. Um, in our prayer time, our corporate prayer call on Wednesday is going to move up to 7 p.m. So um, our Monday through Friday prayer calls, we do that every single uh, day, Monday through Friday. Um, that's going to remain at 6 a.m. So that ain't changing. The number for that is also on our church website. So make sure you plug into that and hop on the prayer call in the morning at 6 a.m. Let's keep getting these numbers up, guys. Share, 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 share. Um, so those are my updates, guys, that are coming up. Also, this Easter, our theme for Easter is unashamed. We are unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we are going hard for um, the gospel message of Jesus Christ. This is based out of Romans 1 16, where Paul said, for I am unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we're going to be talking all month long in April about what that means to truly be unashamed as a believer in Jesus Christ. So that just gets me excited. Hey, Victoria. Hey, Desiree. Hi, Minister Lanise. Hey, hey, hey. More of you guys popping in. Drop in where you are tuning in from so I can shout you out tonight. Awesome. Oh man, I left my bracelets. I feel a little empty without my bracelets on. But uh, <laughs> no worries. We are going to have us a good time tonight. We're going to go ahead and hop on in and pray because I don't want to hold you guys too long. And I got some really great notes I want to share with you guys tonight. So make sure you stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Let's stay with it. Okay, let's pray. <laughs> Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you tonight thanking you, Lord God, for uh, just allowing us to gather through social media, God, through the internet. And Father, we just pray right now, God, over this connection, God, that everything remains uh, clear and working well in the airways. We plead the blood over this broadcast tonight. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you would bind every demonic arrow that will come against tonight's teaching. We bind spirits of distraction. We bind, Father God, um, anxiety and, 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 uh, fidgeting. And we just ask God that you would lose focus in the name of Jesus, that you would open up the ears in the hearts of your people, God, to receive this word on tonight. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you would just release a teaching anointing tonight in the areas of exploring hidden secrets to intercessory prayer for your people. I pray God that your people be, um, expanded and enlarged their capacity to pray as a result of tonight's teaching. God, I know that prayer is so important on your heart, God, for your people. So I pray, Lord God, that tonight you truly speak through me, Father God, and penetrate um, the hearts of your people tonight. Father, decrease me, increase in you. In Jesus' name we pray. 
It is so. Amen. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. Awesome, 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 awesome. Okay, so guys, I need you guys to share this, share the share the live. Make sure also on the church page that it's up <clears throat> and it's flowing. Let me head on over there and check and make sure that we are live over there as well. Um, I'm getting some messages through people are saying that they can't get through. They don't see it. So I'm not sure why. Let's see. Let's make sure that this thing, this bad boy is up and going live. All right. So make sure it's on the Salt Life page as well. Um, let me see. Where is it? Are we live? Y'all still there? Okay, we're live. We're live. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, well, let's hop right on into uh, Secrets of Intercessory Prayer tonight. Let's hop right on into Secrets of Intercessory Prayer on tonight. First of all, I just want to talk to you guys, uh, letting you know what's on the heart of God. It is prayer. Prayer is, um, to be honest, I'll give you a little bit of my own experience with prayer. At first, I'm going to be honest. As a Christian, there are lots of amazing, fun things that come along with, you know, our Christian routine. Uh, you know, seeing the sick healed, hearing about the dead being raised, speaking in an unknown language, uh, seeing angels, you know, casting out devils. Um, you know, a lot of fun stuff, hearing God, you know, all of that great supernatural stuff. But a lot of times, uh, for me early on, prayer was like one of the last things I would want to do. Prayer seemed to be like, you know, if your personality is you want to like run forth and you got a lot of energy and you want to move and do these different things. It's like when you hear the topic of prayer, it's not always something that's appeasing. It's not, it's almost like eating vegetables and fruit and cutting out sugar and carbs. It's like living a healthy lifestyle. And so if you are a personality who enjoys the cakes and the cookies and the ribs and the butterfingers and the biscuits, um, so to speak, it's like when people start talking about healthy stuff, you'd be like, I mean, I know that's real. I know it's, I know, I know what you're talking about. Like, I, I know we're supposed to be healthy, but that ain't really hot. That's not really like turning me on. You know what I'm saying? Anybody else? I got anybody else that's been that. Come on, be real. Keep it real. Keep it real. So for me as a Christian for a long time, you know, um, the subject of prayer was like trying to like be like super healthy, like, you know, eating a salad and vegetables and raw fruits and you're like where is the sweet potato pie okay can I get a rib plate please I don't want I don't you know I'm not that that you know health conscious and that's how some of us are in our Christian faith where it's like we prefer the good stuff the sweet stuff the meaty stuff you know the stuff that makes you feel good but Long term, over time, you're not sustained by that if that is all your diet is filled with. It's just the cakes and sugars and the meat and the, the grease, you know? And and while, listen, while prophesying is great and casting out devils is great and seeing things in the spirit is great. And yes, I'm comparing those things to the ribs and the the, the, the yummy stuff, right? Because that's the fun stuff, right? I'm comparing that stuff to the popcorn and the candy apples because what I want you guys to understand and what God wants us to understand is that prayer is the foundation that we build everything else off of, if that makes sense. Like prayer, a lot of people want to skip prayer, but they want to prophesy. A lot of people, they want to cast out demons, but they don't want to pray. Um, they want to go and, and heal the sick but they don't want to pray. They want to, you know, believe God and use faith for these incredible things, but they don't want to pray. And it's like in the body of Christ in me being a pastor um, and wanting to make sure that I couple with, with the Holy ghost to make sure we have a healthy, firm foundation as a church is that we don't want to get so off into the spiritual giftings that are available to us, all the fun stuff without 
dealing with the foundational stuff. And so it's like, you know, yeah, we can have fun. You can eat your candy apples and we can have popcorn and it ain't nothing wrong with that in moderation. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that. God's not trying to say you can never eat ribs again. Hey, he made them. He's never, he's not saying that we can't have the baked beans and the macaroni and cheese. But what he is saying is that that does not need to be the only thing in our diet as Christians, because if we do that, then we will get sick. You know, you ever been doing that for, for a while? You've been eating like heavy stuff or really sweet stuff every single day for like weeks at a time and you feel sluggish, you feel your face is breaking out. You're wondering, why don't I feel the same? I can't move that much. I'm trying to run or I'm trying to go up the steps. Now I'm winded. And it's because that's all you eat. And so for a lot of times, for a lot of us, we're, we want to be spiritually deep and we get worn out because we're not even taking care of the basics of our Christian um, uh, regimen. And that basic regimen is prayer. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's prayer is like reading the Bible. It's like somebody, do you want to read a book about how to read your Bible well? Or do you want to read a book about how to prophesy? That's where you know I got some work to do because we want to do the fun stuff, right? I want to prophesy. I want to see in the spirit. God, open up my eyes. Let me see things, the flames of fire. You know, let me cast out devils. Hallelujah. But we don't even want to read the Bible. And we sure don't want to pray. <laughs> but we want to do all the other stuff and we end up getting spiritually sick because we don't have our foundation set. So I really want us to understand that we need to crave understanding. Um, we need to crave being healthy, balanced Christians. And so this is a teaching that's going to help balance you so that you can actually propel and be even greater in your spiritual gifts and even greater in your faith, even greater in seeing the exploits of God, because now you're not a loose balloon that's just floating around in the atmosphere. Rather, you have a base. You have something to hold on to. You're not just a, a loose kite. You know, think about a kite. A lot of us are kites. We just flying in the air with nothing, nobody holding us. We just out. And so it's like when you get ready to come down, it's like, who gonna, what, what's going to bring you down? No, nothing was holding it. Yes, our spiritual foundation must be intact. And we got to talk about this, y'all. We got to talk about prayer because prayer is the foundation, really, of our power system that activates all the other fun stuff on top of it. Okay. So this is important. So stay with me because you might be tempted to be like, Pastor Emmy, I love you, but this is boring. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, but I promise you, listen, I'm believing God that we're going to move into a healthy space where we are going to begin craving the things of God, the basic things of God, because we're going to enjoy how it makes us feel. And our appetite will begin to change. Not to say that we won't want to prophesy, that we won't want to cast out devils. No, we should. That's part of our commission. But it will get us back to the basics of where we are stabilized in our exploits as Christians. And we're not feeling so tired and winded and beat up because we've lost our foundation. So we've got to make sure that, you know, we're eating our healthy stuff and we're drinking enough water every day spiritually. Y'all got me? So what is prayer, first of all? So prayer in its most basic form, prayer in its most basic form is obviously talking, communicating to God. And so that's important. But more specifically, we're talking about secrets of intercession. And I want to talk about the aspect of intercession that's a little different from just, you know, regular praying. Intercession means literally to... Um, to come in and mediate on the behalf of, it could be your family, it could be uh, your husband, your wife, your child, it could be on your on behalf of your church, a friend, your your city, or a nation. Um, intercession has to deal with stepping in the middle to help to mediate. So this is an aspect of our lives, um, our prayer lives, where it's not just self focused, where um. We can benefit, obviously, from intercession um, ourselves um, because there are rewards to intercession. 
Okay. Um, but intercession in and of itself is really very, very important because it really causes us to kind of take the focus off of just ourselves. And sometimes when we talk to God, we are a little selfish. All we talk to him about is ourselves. And God needs us to understand as a church that we have a bigger assignment than just our personal life, our personal self and our personal wants and desires. But rather the prayers of the righteous availeth much. That means that there's a collective. There is something bigger than just you, bigger than just me that God wants us to participate in as believers in Jesus Christ. Okay. So intercession really is dealing with the topic of, of specializing um, in the area of mediating in conversation with God to plead on the behalf of someone else or another place, another th situation, another thing. And so um, it really, intercession is not so much self-focused, um, although it can be in certain in uh, instances, but obviously, um, you know, for instance, if you're interceding on the behalf of, let's say you're in a marriage, you're interceding for your husband or you're interceding for your, your marriage, obviously, um, you get to benefit from that when you're in intercession, but it's not just about you. It's something that you're praying for that's affecting someone else. Okay. Um, or for instance, like we just had the Colorado shooting that happened. Um, was it yesterday? The Colorado shooting, um, in, in, uh, even last week, the shootings in the, um, uh, of the, of the spas where these, um, people were targeted, Asians were, sh were shot and killed when we intercede, that would be a form of if the Holy Spirit leads you, um, or maybe you're just burdened about it. When you go into praying for someone else or another situation, you begin to pray on the behalf of the victims or the families, praying for the city, praying for the nation, praying to protect for the God protects people. That That is intercession. So I want you to have that understanding of the difference between I'm just personally praying and then when I'm interceding. Okay, so tonight I want to talk about um, uh, intercession um, because it's very, very uh, important that we mobilize to begin interceding because I want you to understand that when we pray for others, we really are, in fact, praying for ourselves. When we pray for our city, when we pray for our nation, when we pray for our church or our family, we're praying for ourselves. Let me tell you how. Because... If you don't pray and you're not inviting God to into the situation, then if that situation remains bad, eventually you're going to get hit by whatever's going on in the situation. You might not be being affected just yet, but at some point you could be if you don't step in and intercede. That makes sense? All right. So um, let me let me start by saying this. Why is it? Why is it that the enemy attacks the Christian's prayer life more than any other discipline in the Christian's walk? Why? Why do you think that is? Why do you think that Satan attacks the Christian's prayer life more than any other discipline that we have. I mean, we can fast. We're supposed to read our Bible. We're supposed to go to church and gather to worship together. We're supposed to pay our tithes. We're supposed to be kind and forgiving to one another. It's a lot of things that we're supposed to do as Christian believers, correct? But why is it that prayer, praying as a discipline, as one of the, one of the principles of being a Christian, why is it do you think that the enemy attacks that thing more than all the others, more than attacking you to try to get you not to tithe? The devil is going to, if he had to choose between getting you not to tithe or getting you not to pray, which one you think he's going to go for? He's going to go for you not praying over you not tithing. If you think if there's an option between you forgiving someone or praying, he would rather let you forgive somebody instead of praying about it. He wants our prayer life. Why? So let's talk about this. Let's talk about why the enemy is after your prayer life. Okay. First, go with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 7. And we're going to look at verses 14 and 15. Check this out. This scripture says, If my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble 
themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Verse 15 says, now mine eyes shall be open. This is God. And mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. What this is saying is, is that if we want God to forgive our sin, if we want God to heal our land, if we want God to intervene in our finances, intervene in our families, intervene in our nation, whatever the case, whatever calamity and trouble we might be in, God is saying, this is what it's going to take. It's going to take you humbling yourself and praying about it. Bingo. So what the enemy understands is, is that if you want to get God's attention to move on your behalf and to break you out of bondage, you're going to have to pray. You're going to have to pray. So what does he do? He says, I will rather distract you with all the other Christian principles and you can tithe, honey, you can go to church, honey, you can read that Bible all you want to, baby, please just don't pray. Because when you pray, when you humble yourselves and pray and, and prayer, when it says and seek my face, part of seeking his face is the prayer part. Because when we are in prayer, we are what? Seeking his face. When we are praying, we are what? Humbling ourselves. Okay. When we are praying, we are turning from our wicked ways. I don't know how you can still stay wicked and you praying. I don't know how you got time to do both. I can't, I can't be praying and, and, and. In, in sinning at the same time. Well, some of y'all might have known how to figure out how to do that, but I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Ooh, Holy Ghost said, hold on. Some of them know how to do that now. Some of them be, be smoking the weed and praying at the same time. Lord, help me stop smoking the weed. Lord, help me. Some of y'all even been in the bed doing something you're supposed to be doing with somebody, praying while you're doing what you ain't supposed to be doing. So, that so I don't know if that was a good example. Cause some of y'all know how to do it. Okay, some of some of us God's still working on y'all. Y'all gotta turn from them wicked ways. Quit praying while you're doing that stuff. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Thank you, Jesus. Hello. Keep it real. Come on, Pastor Emmy. All right. God said, Oh, wait a minute. Some of them be praying to me while they be doing stuff they ain't got no business. Anyway, my point is, <laughs> what was my point? Y'all are silly. Y'all, <laughs> y'all, 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 y'all a trip. <clears throat> but my point is, <laughs> oh, God has a sense of humor. He's laughing at y'all, at us. So um, the point is, is that the enemy understands that when we truly pray, when we truly pray and we begin to go into intercession, he understands that God is going to open his ears and open his eyes to begin to move in our situation. And that has to come by way of us humbling ourselves and praying and seeking him, which we are supposed to do. That is a picture of um, prayer is the picture of really seeking the face of God. Obviously, you know, we want to talk to him. So we're inquiring of the Lord. We're calling upon the Lord. We're looking for the Lord in prayer. So that is why the enemy targets prayer, because if he can keep us out of prayer, he can keep us out of power with God. He can keep us out of power. He can keep us out of um, activating the true hand of God. Um, and so, again, he don't mind if you read a whole bunch of books. You don't mind if you go to a whole bunch of conferences and services and you can be walking around trying to quote all of the Beatitudes in the Bible. Just don't pray. <laughs> OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn that around and we're going to realize this. I want you to understand, guys, that prayer is your power. Prayer, if there was an equation, I want you to understand that prayer would equal power. Prayer equals power. Prayer equals power. 
Um, I don't know about you, but I think when we are in a spiritual war where the enemy's coming for you, we're going to need power, right? So if you want to know how to get power so that you can overcome the wiles of the enemy, you're going to need to understand the foundation, which is prayer. Excuse me. So again, we want to prophesy. We want to cast out devils. We want to see in the spirit. Excuse me. We want to make millions of dollars. We want God to bless our finances. We want to have supernatural increase. We want to have supernatural miracles. We want to walk in supernatural faith. We want to walk in faith. We want to see revival. We want to see our family members come to Christ. We want to see our nation turned around. How are we going to see any of that if we don't have power? It takes power, the power of God for things to be released from us. So if we want to see, you know, walk in faith and we want to walk in miracles and we want to see signs and wonders, the power that's needed to release those things, the power that's needed to release miracles, signs and wonders comes from a prayer life. Let's be very clear. Don't come from a book. Don't come from somebody laying hands on you alone. Those things are nice and added in, in, in there. They add to it. Somebody can lay hands on you or you can read a book and get activation. But let me tell you something. Without a power source, a constant power source, whatever was activated will deactivate at some point. So if we want to stay activated in the spiritual realm of power, we've got to understand that prayer is that, 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 that source. Prayer is literally our connection to God and he is our source. It's just like, you know, a, a power source, an outlet and the plug. Okay, listen, we need to make sure that we are plugging in so that we can receive power. And a lot of times we don't understand this. I'm going to touch on one of these points in just a moment. But I want us to understand that because um, it's actually my second point um, where we think we have this idea, this misconception that because we're saved and we're born again and we love Jesus, we think that because of his sovereignty, if he wants to do something, if he wants to give us power, if he wants to move through us, he's just going to do it. Whether we do anything to, like, we think that we don't have a part to play in that, that he's just sovereign. God is just who he is and he's just going to do what he's going to do. No, that's not true. That is a misinterpretation of sovereignty. It's a misinterpretation. A lot of times we're not praying about things and we say stuff, you know, we see things happening in our world or happening to us, happening to our loved ones. And we just chalk it up to, well, I'm going to leave it in God's hands. Um... Huh? Well, you know, God is sovereign, so he just going to do what he's going to do. No, that's not true. That's not the way that goes. It's And the devil would love for you to keep on thinking that. He would love for us to keep on thinking, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> God just going to be God. He's going to do what he's going to do. I get, well, it didn't work. So it didn't, you know, well, it is what it is. No, it doesn't work that way. I'm sorry. No, we have a part to play. And if we don't plug into the to the power source and release the power that comes from him into the earth, we're going to be dealing with the consequences all the while thinking that God did it, that it was just his, his will. No. So I'm going to touch on that um, on the second point. But first, I want to take you to um, the, the first point. The first point is this. When it comes to prayer, y'all, an intercessory prayer, your personal prayer life in order for you to be a good intercessor, to pray on the behalf of other people, situations, or things, you have first got to have your own uh, healthy prayer life, personal prayer life, okay? And I want to address this really quick. Guys, <clears throat> quiet as it's kept, unfortunately, people don't want to tell you about this, but the truth is, is that there should be for you as a believer, a minimum daily requirement for prayer. Prayer time must be regulated. Prayer time must be regulated. In, these, in other words, you need to have a regular prayer schedule. Yes, not, see, a lot of times we got, we, we wait until prayer comes upon us. We're like, well, if God wants me to pray. He'll tap me on, in my spirit and then I'll pray. No, 
Oh, no, that's not how that works. That's not, that's not smart. In order for us, remember, prayer equals power. And the enemy wants you and I to be powerless, okay? So he don't mind if we being deep. He don't mind if you got worship music playing on in the background. He don't mind if you got the Bible open on the kitchen table. He don't mind if you get up every Sunday and go to church. What he minds is if you start doing those things plus praying regularly. Because prayer releases the power. Prayer releases the power. Come on, somebody type that. Prayer releases the power. Okay, so prayer releases the power of the word that you are reading. If you are reading the word, prayer releases and unlocks the power of the word. Prayer un unleashes and unlocks the power of your praise and your worship. Prayer releases and unlocks the fasting element. If you fast without praying, you're not fasting, you're on a diet. So prayer goes with fasting. Hello. <laughs> So these things, you need to pray and tithe, pray over your seed. Hello, come on. You need to pray and anoint your house or anoint your children or anoint people. You need to pray and have faith. You, your, your prayer unlocks your faith. So the enemy don't mind if we do all of the other stuff as long as we're just not. It's almost like he doesn't mind us being an appliance. So if you look in your kitchen, you got a toaster, you got a panini maker, you got a coffee maker. He doesn't mind if you have the capability to make coffee. He just don't want you plugging into the socket so that you actually make coffee. He doesn't mind if you have the capability to make a panini. He just don't want you ever plugging in so that you can actually make the panini. He doesn't mind if you have the capability to make toast. He just wants to make sure... You never plug it in to where you put the toast in and it actually gets toasted. That's what I'm saying. So we have capacity and spiritual gifting on the inside of us to change things in our world. But the devil's like, what they can't do is plug in. Because if they plug in, the baby is on. Now things are brewing. <laughs> Coffee. So he doesn't want you to brew. He just wants you to stand there and look like an appliance. And that's what a lot of us are in our lives as Christian believers. We just look like something. We just look like a shiny appliance. Ain't never being used. Never being turned on. And prayer is how we do that. So number one, we have to understand that in order for us to really begin operating in the power of God, we need to have Regular prayer times with the Lord. There, sh in other words, write this down. There should be a set time. Say set time. Can somebody type that out? Set time. S E T. A set time for prayer every day, not weekly, not every other day, but every day. A set time. Pastor Emmy, what you mean? Why I got to do all that? I'm gonna get to that. But every single day. You must have a set time for prayer. Listen, this is not the same as um, dual tasking. What am I? What is dual tasking? See, a lot of us we think we're deep because God about to tell on us. <laughs> you think you be praying because you're praying in the shower. You think you're praying because you're driving and you're praying down the street. Oh, you thought you was praying because while you was um, kickboxing, you was you was praying. No, that's called dual tasking. That's not set aside time to pray. Oh, you thought you was. Oh, so when you do when you was doing the dishes and you was praying and you bust out in tongues, you thought that was that set time to pray. No. That's not what we're talking about. Keep that up. Do that. Do that, too. OK. But what I'm talking about is a set time set aside and consecrated aside for a meeting with the Lord. Let me ask you this. A lot of our kids are virtual right now. If you had a meeting with your child's principal to talk, are you going to choose to talk to them via Zoom or on a conference call while you're washing dishes? It's a meeting. 
I don't know how you can do that because I can't really pay attention if I'm doing dishes and I'm really trying to respect the principal to really, you know, hear what they're trying to communicate to me. And I need to make sure I know what's going on with my child. This is really serious. I don't think I should be dual tasking while I'm having a conference. Okay. Let me, some of you, how about your business? You got a serious, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, some business. You're trying to call in to see what's going on with your paperwork for a loan to go through or or your taxes. You're trying to talk to your accountant on the phone because tax time coming up. You got to get these numbers together. You know what I'm saying? Let me ask you this. Are you going to sit on the phone with your accountant and have that conversation while you're in the shower? I, I, I hope you ain't doing that. Because if your numbers come out wrong, don't blame the accountant. That's because you weren't paying attention. So this is how we have to understand our time with God. Yes, we talk to him because he is our friend. But this set aside time that I'm speaking of is not the same as just casual dual tasking where you're just having regular conversation with the Lord throughout the day. We should do that. But I'm saying as a Christian, if you want to receive power, you're going to have to get very intentional to set aside consecrated time to meet with the Lord every day, every day. Somebody say every day, every day, because it is through prayer that also you need to let God speak to you. He can't speak if the water running so loud while you're under the washing your hair you can't even hear. You can't even write down what he's saying because you ain't got a pen nowhere. You use covered in soap suds. Or, you know, you, you 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 driving down the highway and now he didn't gave you a download and you about to get into a car wreck because you can't reach fast enough for your journal. No. Understand. Understand. We need to set aside time like we are going to meet with our um, superior. If you were working for somebody, working for your boss, and some of you know what that's like, some of you are your own bosses, think about it. If you had, you know, an employee working for you and you needed to have a meeting and they coming in there and they popping gum and um, on Twitter at the same time trying to have a serious meeting with you, you're going to be like, you know what, just come back. Or how about don't? Because you playing. I'm busy. God be looking at us. He'd be like, I'll, I'll wait. I'll come back. Next. Because <laughs> y'all playing games with me. <laughs> and you trying to break a generational curse. And you can't even pay 5, 10, 15 minutes of attention to me. But you want me to heal the tumor. You want me to heal you from COVID. You want me to break the, the bonds of, of lack and debt off you, but you can't even cut the TV off long enough. You're trying to pray in between the days of our lives. How? How can I talk to you with all of this other stuff going on? How? How? I'm going to talk to you in the middle, you know, and I'm trying to fit this stuff. in. God is like, yes, I'm your friend, but I'm also the, the king of the universe. I am the God of the galaxy. Put some respect on my name, please. Just once a day. Talk to me as friends throughout the day, yes. But with this particular set aside time, come correct. Come, bring your Bible, bring a notepad, shut the phone off and spend some time with me so I can deal with you. I can talk to you so that you can actually get what you need to get. Okay, so our personal relationship with God must be on our list of highest priority, okay? It must be on our list of highest priority. Now, my second point is this. I'm almost through. My second point is this. Somebody type the time in there for me because I don't have my computer up. The second is the I love you principle. The I love you principle. So this is the, the theory that sometimes when you're married, right? Uh, there have been some couples who are not that affectionate. So uh, they may not tell their spouse every day, I love you. They just assume they better know by now we married. Or maybe you have a parent that was like that. You know, they want, they just assume that, you know, 
I feed you, I clothe you. When taxes come, I buy you new shoes. I make sure you get your two-piece chicken meal every Wednesday. So you should know I love you by now. And if you don't know by now, that's your, that's your fault. Because I love you, even though I don't say it. So this is the I love you principle. Sometimes we assume that God is supposed to know how we feel about him without us having to verbalize that or, sh or show that verbally. We just say, well, the Lord knows my heart. He knows. God knows my heart. But here's the issue with that. The issue with that is just because someone knows doesn't mean that that makes you exempt from every day telling them that. That's a healthy principle to, to live by in a marriage or with raising children. Every day, I tell my husband I love him. Every day, he tells me he loves me. Every day, I tell my children I love them. Every day, they tell me they love me. I never get tired of hearing it. As a matter of fact, if one of us hang up the phone without saying it, we texting each other like, you forgot to say it. Oh, I love you. Why is that important? It's important because there are some things you just don't get tired of. There are some things that we need to be reminded of daily as a form of respect of the relationship. That I want this to be something that's known in the relationship. I want this to be something that's known and not assumed. Okay? So, so the I love you principle happens with us and God. It's like, well, the God knows my heart. You know, God is a God of grace. He knows all. So he know I love him even though I don't have time to spend with him. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I don't have a lot of time, but he knows how I feel. And I don't want to get into legalism. And yes, I'm I'm big on that too. I don't want us to get into legalism to where it's like, oh my God, if I forget, I just feel like I'm going to hell. No, you're not going to go to hell. And there's, there is grace, but we want to make sure that we don't fall for the misconception or the lie that check this out. The lie that the enemy tells us that God is somehow because of his sovereignty and because of his nature, that God will, will maintain the relationship between us on his own initiative. The enemy wants us to think that God will maintain the relationship between us on his own initiative. Whether or not we perform by scheduling prayer time. That's what the enemy wants you to think. Oh, you can go five weeks without praying. God still love you, baby. He still love you. He still love you. That's all right. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Don't feel, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. God still love you. Baby. Yeah, but this is not about whether you know God loves you or not. It's about the fact that God ain't going to be giving you power if you ain't plugging in. And he can still love you, baby. But this idea that we don't have to pray regularly and meet with him, but we're still su supposed to be able to function on a certain spiritual level of power, whether or not we maintain our relationship, our connection, our power source with him, that's, that's demonic. So what happens is, is that we go days and days without plugging into the source. And then we come up against a challenge. We come up against a giant. We come up against a mountain. And now we get ready to go speak to that mountain and tell it to be moved and it don't move. And we like, well, wait. Uh, let me try it again. Let me, let me. Abracadabra. Wait, it's not moving. Hold on. Wait a minute, God. What's going on, God? God, why is that moving? And God said, first of all, abracadabra ain't what I said to say. First of all. Second of all, brother, you broke. Sister, you broke. You don't have no power in your account. you like, wait, wait, wait. But God, you love me. And God's like, they don't have nothing to do. This has nothing to do with love. Yes, I love you. But you haven't been praying. So you have not been connecting to the source. So now that you're at the mountain, you got to start all the way over. Start plugging in again and pumping up your muscle in prayer and interceding and taking a longer time than it needed to 
so that you can get enough power to say to the mountain, be moved, be removed and cast into the sea. We have to understand that even when we speak the word, you can decree all day, but if you don't have the power behind your decree, it won't move. Instead, they just become empty words. If you have not been praying in your relation, your personal time with God and getting your power source where it needs to be, then when you go to quote the scriptures or speak the word and decree a thing, it's not going to work. Well, well, uh, the pastor said to say it, say so. Uh, yeah, say it in faith. Well, I do believe you don't believe enough. You haven't been plugging into the source. The belief in and of itself is not enough. Faith is a spiritual substance that comes from prayer, from the power of God. Faith is a power source that's released. When you release a word, it's being released by faith, but it's got to be backed by your prayer life. So that's why it's not moving. So that's one of the things that we have to <laughs> understand. Yeah, God loves us. But we're going to come up against things. And just because he loves us doesn't mean. <laughs> it doesn't mean that it's going to be an abracadabra. If you don't have the muscle, it won't move. And the muscle comes through power, muscle, force, power. And God is like, if you ain't been praying since you broke. I'm just saying. Okay. My third, uh, my third point, my third point is the time that we spend in prayer must be sufficient. It must be sufficient. The time that we spend in prayer must be sufficient. What am I mean? Guys, believe it or not, at first when it comes to your prayer life, I, I know this is going to sound weird. Because when I read it, it sounded weird too. This actually um, is is notes I've taken from an amazing um, book I was I've been reading called Prayer Shield by uh, C. Peter Wagner. And when I heard this concept, I was like, Oh no, that's true. Mm. But then I said, Yeah, it is true. C. Peter Wagner, the late C. Peter Wagner, he's gone on to be with the Lord now. But he says that after all of his years of of studying and in, in researching about intercession in people's prayer lives and the power of their ministries connected to prayer versus the lack of power in ministries because of the lack of prayer. He's noticed that when it comes to building a person's prayer life, that it's really about quanti quantity over quality when it comes to time that you spend with God. I know for me too, I was like, wait, that's typically backwards. Typically we're always like, well, it's about quality and not quantity. No, in this case, it is about quantity of time spent with God and the quality will follow. What am I saying? What I'm saying is, is that there is a connection to how much time we spend in prayer and how much power we receive in prayer. In other words, when you're building your power source in God, the more often you plug in, the more power you receive. So for instance, if you were to go three days in a row and you plugged in three days in a row for 15 minutes, three days in a row. No, I'm not gonna say 15 minutes. Let's say 30 minutes a day three of set aside time. I'm not talking about the dual tasking, but set aside. I set aside 30 minutes a day for, th for three days. That 30 minute increment of time that you set aside with God is more powerful than one day out of the three days that you spent in an hour of prayer with God. See, we think, oh, well, yesterday I had a really intense prayer time with God. Woo! -hoo! And I'm straight for seven days. No. <laughs> Sorry, when it comes to power and connecting in prayer, you need to make sure that you're going regularly, okay? Why is it that your one day of one hour is not going to be as powerful as your 
uh, three days of 30 minutes each day. It's because every day you've been connecting to your source and getting something different. You've been the quantitative amount of how much time we spend with God is a uh, direct connection to how much power, the quantity of power that we receive as well. So it's more of a thing of when it comes to our prayer life, it really is more like gas. How much do I get filled up? How much am I filling up? How much fuel am I getting? Um, if you filled up one time the whole month and you'd be like, well, I, 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 I filled up. I, I did. I put it on full. I, 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 I put all of my money into the gas tank. Yes, but my love, that was a month ago. <laughs> I don't care how good the gas was. I don't care how much money you spent that one time. You're going to continue driving and it's going to burn out. So you got to keep putting it back in. Does that make sense, guys? There constantly needs to be a replenishment. Thank you, Holy Ghost. See, we think sometimes we have a powerful experience. We go to a service. Somebody laid hands on us. We got a prophecy. We went to a conference. We're, yes, take on the world. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we'd be like, good, I'm straight for about two months. Then you wonder why you're getting beat up like Mike Tyson in the ring. That's because what you got two months ago is not meant to sustain you two months later when it comes to your power source. That word, as a matter of fact, it's more important that in order to retain the anointing or the impartation or the gift that you were given at the conference or at the word or at the service, you must continue that by continual prayer so that it will grow Whatever you receive, the impartation, the activation, you want that to expand. You want that to grow. So that's why you need to pray daily and pray more so that whatever you receive, the gift can grow because our gifts grow. Do you realize that? Our gifts can grow based off of how much power we have or do not have. So if you're not feeding it, feeding your power source through prayer, you ain't going to grow. The gift going to remain, uh, uh, maintain, I mean, uh, uh, it's going to, to remain limited in its, its ability to grow if you're not praying. So, um, having a regular daily prayer time is the first and most essential component of a person's prayer life. However, the amount of time is just as important. How much time am I spending in prayer? Each prayer session, think about it for real. I want y'all to type right now. Some of y'all, I don't know if y'all gonna, <laughs> I don't wanna put some of y'all on the spot, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Honestly, just drop, what is your average prayer time that you spend? You know, I was one of those preachers that would tell people just five minutes a day. You know, not that I would do that for myself, but I would say, at least, you know, if you're busy, blah, 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 at least try to set aside five minutes in the morning, blah, blah. Let me tell you something. God has wrecked that. He's like, not, 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 that ain't going, that ain't going to work. That's not enough. Not for the warfare they're under. Five minutes in the morning. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm, this shit, table, shot, top, blah, 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 blah. I don't care how good the tongues was. That five minutes ain't going to be enough to sustain you. Okay. That 10 minutes, that little, oh, well, you know. And then we're dual tasking while we're doing that as well. Okay. So listen, um, see Peter Wagner um, believes from his research and his um, doing, taking statistics of people's prayer lives about, you know, how many time, how much people pray. This is not to be legalistic, but this is just to help you get a roundabout idea of, okay, how much maybe should I be praying? Um, I would say roughly, no less than 15 to 20 minutes a day. No less. Preferably more. Um, anything under 15, if you really are, are, are serious about your walk with Christ and about growing um, in the things of God, growing in your gifting, growing in um, spiritual warfare, growing in intercession, 
Anything under 15 minutes is not enough daily. It's, it's just not enough. And I'm still being quite nice. Guys, the truth is, is that for pastors um, and many, many people that I admire, revivalists that are huge revivalists all around the world, many of their names, if I said them, you would have no idea who they are um, because many of them are from different countries or, you know, maybe that's not your field. I mean, I'm a pastor. So some of these people I've heard of or had to study because of the field I'm in as a as a pastor. But many uh, of the these major um, prophets, evangelists, apostles, and pastors that I admire, that I've seen the power of God work in. I mean, when we're talking about seeing people raised from the dead, when we're talking about seeing people get healed from, you know, uh, crooked spines, when we're talking about people who have, who are, uh, you know, arms that were nubs turning into limbs again, when we're talking about people who had blind eyes who couldn't see and now they're seeing guys a lot of these men and women who do these miracle signs and wonders their prayer time is minimum one two even three hours a day of set aside consecrated time of prayer i'm talking about straight i ain't talking about like broken up over time i'm talking about as a matter of fact many of them pray two hours straight just like straight, just no break, just boom. They're in prayer that long. So, so listen, you may not be called to be a worldwide evangelist or a worldwide apostle or, you know, um, where you're a pastor of a church or you're pastoring, you know, planting churches and casting out demons in stadiums. No, that may not be what you're called to. So I'm not saying that that's something that you even need to strive to get to. What I am saying is that you being a Christian believer that wants to have victory in your everyday life, understand that if this is what the big dogs are doing who are called to the governments in the church, you can at least do 15 minutes uninterrupted every day. If they're doing one, two, three, sometimes even six hours a day of just praying. I need us to understand that when we're seeing men and women even for, for instance, for myself, when you see me pick up the mic and you see me pray and you feel the atmosphere shift, that is because I have a disciplined, private prayer life. You can't, you can't manufacture power. I don't care. Well, yes, you can. You can demonically manufacture power. Okay. All right. I, I'm talking about Holy Ghost power. Now, occult powers... What, and the truth is, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but realize that witches and warlocks and shamans and, and, and mediums and spiritualists, they do the same thing. I mean, they are spending hours upon hours chanting and praying and doing spells and incantations and fasting to get power. People, and spiritual people who are called to things of the spirit understand that it's very simple. What you put in is what you get out. And if you don't put enough in, you're not going to get a lot out. So even with witches and warlocks, the higher up they go, the more committed to their spiritual practices they must become. They're extremely disciplined. Do you think that Harry Potter did? Harry Potter was at school making up potions. Hello. They fast. They pray. They study. They learn incantations. And that's why. As a believer, hear me, if you are a everyday believer walking around, yes, you have authority, you have power, but if you come up against a witch or a warlock or some, some, some witchcraft is trying to come up against you, if that witch or warlock has been praying more than you and releasing a curse, if you don't have enough power source in you, okay, if you have not been as just a believer, I ain't saying you have to be a pastor or a call to the fivefold ministry. I'm just talking about as a believer. If you have not been praying enough and having enough word in you to release against that, their quantity of power is going to trump you because you only have a little bit. We must understand that when Jesus talked about the mustard seed size of faith, that was about how little faith it takes to move a mountain if you've got power. 
If I've got power on the inside of me, dunamis power, dynamite power on the inside of me, I can have this much, a little mustard size, seed, a mustard seed size of faith, and it's got to move because I don't have to take it because I've got power. I'm connected to the source every day. I'm explosive. I don't have to. I don't have to bench press 350 pounds to prove that I, I got power. So all it takes is because I've been convinced because of my time I spend with the Lord and I'm connected to him. I'm working in his power. All it takes is a mustard size, a mustard seed size of faith to tell the mountain be moved. That what that scripture does not mean is that it takes a mustard seed size of power. It said faith, not power. Power and faith are two different things. I need power to work my faith. So if I have enough power, then all I need is a little faith. I wish somebody could get what I'm trying to put down. That's why, listen, that's why when a man or woman of God is coming through the, through the town, like Paul and Peter, the Bible says that Peter would be walking through the streets and by his shadow, people would get healed. He didn't have to touch them, just his shadow. If the shadow fell on them, they would get healed. That's because the man was a was a walking source of power because he prayed all the time. He was connected to God every day. The let me tell you something. The apostles in the book of Acts decided to get deacons for this very reason. They said, "Listen, we got a lot of stuff going on in the church. Obviously, we got widows who need to eat. We got people who need um, food. We got people who need money." We need to get some deacons in place to handle the governments of this to make sure people are getting what they need because we actually don't have the time to commit to that because we need to what? The Bible says in the book of Acts that the apostles wanted to be able to uh, uh, commit themselves to the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the word. Prayer is a ministry. Basically, the apostles were saying we need more time to pray to devote to prayer, more time to devote to prayer, not just talking about being spiritual, but actually on their face in the presence of God, in the courts of heaven. We need more time to do that and to, and to devote to more time to the ministry of the word than we do to the everyday administration of the church because they understood as apostles what I got to go up against. I'm going to have to be casting out demons out of folk. I'm going to have to be laying uh, hands on the sick and they're going to have to recover. I'm going to have to be going up against the Roman government who's going to be trying to kill me and getting flogged. And I'm going to have to get beat and I'm going to need some power to still get back up and come out of jail and pray on the same block that the police just arrested me from. I need power. So I don't have time to wait tables and to, to budget the account of the church. Let's get some deacons, trusted men and women of God who have that gift Give that to them so we can devote to the ministry, devote ourselves to the ministry of prayer and the word. And it was not five minutes. OK, so I need you to understand where power comes from. It comes from prayer. And I'm not saying that you have to pray as long as Paul did or as long as <laughs> or as long as Peter. <laughs> OK, I'm not saying you got to pray as long as Pastor Emmy. What I because our assignments might be different, but what I am telling you is, is that your average needs to be minimum 15 minutes a day and work your way up if you can and understand that I need to do this daily. I don't need to take breaks, I don't need to take days off. I need to make sure every single day I'm in the face of God because what is coming up against me, I don't need to have to rev it up like an engine. Vroom, vroom. Room. Here come the devil. Room, room. No, I'm already ready. I stay ready. I ain't got to get ready. I already have a healthy prayer life where I meet with God every day, consecrated time aside. Plus, I do my dual prayer. So you can pray in the shower and all those things, but, but I have my set aside time with the Lord. So when things come up against me, I am able to take it out. That makes sense, guys. So um, make it your goal. To minimum 15 to 20 minutes a day. Set a timer. And you might sit in there and be like,
You like, God, I didn't pray everything I know to pray. Uh, it's five minutes. Just sit there. Train yourself to sit in the presence of God. Just sit there. Sit. If you done praying, prayer is not just you moving your mouth. Prayer is also listening. It is a conversation. So set your time aside every day. If you said everything you know to say in the first three minutes, but you still, so you, you got 17 more minutes to go. You like, well, I said everything I know how to pray. God, God don't mind. He like good. Just sit there. Just because you're training your flesh to submit. You're training, you're training your soulish realm to submit. You're saying my spirit is going to have dominance over my flesh. So I'm going to sit here and I'm going to reverence God and I'm going to spend this time because I said I would. And then you go back the next day. You might sit there now. You know, you prayed a little longer. I prayed five whole minutes. I still got 15 left. Just sit. Because I want you to get used to the quantity of time. You need a certain amount of time every day to train yourself to be disciplined in connecting to the power source. Because there is still, whether or not you have stuff to say, that open space is for you also to allow him to speak to you by meditating. So that's why you should take your Bible with you into prayer and take something to write with you when you pray. Because God might, after your five minutes over, you've been sitting there. He might say, you might hear a voice whisper to you and say, turn to the book of Psalms. Okay. Hmm, Psalms. Fill that time with things of the Lord and let him speak to you through the scriptures. Something may say, you might feel, the, well, not something, but the Holy Ghost may say, write out your prayer concerns. Or the Holy Spirit might begin to tell you some names of some people. Write this name down, write that name down, write this country down, write this city down. And I want you to pray over that for the next few days. Okay. So you train yourself to sit and make time for God. And I'm going to tell you guys, this is dangerous teaching. This is probably one of the most dangerous messages I ever teach when I'm teaching on prayer. Because the devil, he get messed up. Because you may not feel it immediately, but over time, your prayer power reservoir is going to build. And you're going to find yourself being able to decree things and command things and it's starting to happen because I've got power. I wish I could snap in this hand. I can't. So I'm gonna just have to make the sound like I am. <laughs> okay. So, um, more prayer is more power. More, the more you pray, the more power you get. And I don't want you to feel legalistic in a sense that if you miss a day that God is mad with you. No, but I want you to understand that while he loves us unconditionally, power is conditional. Our power, not his power. His power ain't conditional. It is what it is. But it's our ability to allow that power to work within us. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him, him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ever ask or think, according to the power that is at work within us. That means that according to the measure of power that's at work inside of you is to the degree you will see the exceedingly abundantly and above. So if you're not spending enough time connecting to the source, then you don't have the power source, the enough power to exert to see the exceedingly abundantly and above. Okay. And as we end, I just want to share this last scripture with you. This last scripture which is um, Mark 1, 35, where um, this scripture talks about uh, when Jesus wrote, would rise up early in the morning to go pray with the Father. And it's interesting, if you go read that, Mark 1, 35, and go through 35 through uh, 39, Jesus would wake up in the morning to go pray with the Father and be alone with him, consecrated time, and the disciples went and, and found him um, and from that point, that's when they went to go to the next town to preach and begin doing miracles. 
Even Jesus's power, he was the son of God. His power was connected to how much he prayed alone with the father. Every day, every morning, he woke up early to spend time plugging into the source every day. Where's Jesus? He up there alone with the Lord, alone with the father every day. Where, where can you find it? See, there needs to come a point in your life where people who know you already know what time of day you praying. They already know. They already, they just, where, where Victoria at? Well, I already know where she at. She praying. Where Jessica at? Oh, oh, I already know she probably praying around this time. Many people try to call me. Y'all already know. I'd be like, hey, y'all, I'm in my prayer time. Because we have to learn to make the father just as real as we would our boss, a principal, a serious client that we're trying to close a deal on. Our parents, when we want undivided attention, why is it that because God is a spirit, we assume that he's just so flexible? No, give him the respect, the honor that he deserves so that you can really receive what he has to give you. The power, the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and by, uh, and, and, and they will by no means hurt you. He want to give us the power to do that. But if we're not coming to him, but we're trying to do all the other stuff, then we won't be able to benefit from him. So uh, guys, I'm closing. If you enjoyed this tonight, please share this video. Tell somebody it's time to pray. And um, <laughs> listen, I'm glad you stuck around with me tonight. Um, I'm probably running over time. I have no idea what time it is, uh, but I got to go pray myself. Okay, I've got to go pray um, some more, some more. I got to go pray some more. And um, I want you guys to be encouraged to really, really see that the enemy's after your prayer. He's after that because he wants you to be a pretty appliance that just don't work. Okay, so we're going to change that. We're going to make sure that we're hooked up so we can actually do what we're called to do. We can function the way we're called to function. Amen. So tonight, if you enjoyed this, please uh, sow into our ministry. The giving um, is in our uh, tag. You can give on Cash App, um, dollar sign, Salt Life Experience. You can also give via our website at www.saltlifeexperience.com. Please sow a seed. Um, if you enjoy our ministry, if you receive from this tonight, please share this video. And I'm going to pray for you um, as we get on out of here. But first, if you do not know Jesus then whatever you've been praying to, I don't know if it's the right, well, not I don't know. It ain't the right source. So you want to make sure you're plugging into the correct source. And Jesus is literally the plug. <laughs> He's the plug. All right. So God is the outlet. Jesus is the plug. We the cord. Okay. Jesus is that connector that gets us into the source. Amen. So if you don't have Jesus, then you can't fully connect. And so we want to make sure that nothing is in the way or inhibits that connection. So we want to extend Jesus Christ to you as your Lord and Savior tonight. Um, I want to be very clear to make that decision to call Jesus your Lord and Savior means to acknowledge him as the only way to eternal life. There are not many ways to God. Contrary to popular belief, there's one way. Jesus said, I am that way. I am the truth and I'm the life. And no man can come to the Father and have eternal life except through me. So if you believe that to be true, if you've received that that um, that pull in your spirit that, wow, you know, there's no other way. I believe Jesus Christ is the only way and I want to serve him and him alone, not mix him up with a whole bunch of other things. But if I, if you believe that Jesus Christ, you, you want to make that decision to make him your Lord, we want to pray with you. You just simply uh, repeat after me, say, Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, I repent of my sins that I've committed and I acknowledge that I'm needing a savior. So right now I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is indeed the son of the living God. So please, Jesus, come into my heart right now. I renounce all other uh, uh, doors, all other routes that I thought I could get to God. And I say that you are the only way for me. You are the way, you are the truth, and you are the life. And I receive you now by faith. Amen. If you said that prayer, then you meant it. Welcome into the family of God. You are saved. And we want to make sure that you get some tools to stay on uh, cultivating that relationship with God. I have a, 
a, a resource I want to give you. So please, you know, reach out to us, email us or inbox us. Let us know that you received Christ on tonight so we can get you a free gift. And congratulations for making the best decision you've ever made in your life. All right. And so let's pray. I want to pray for you guys. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, for this message. I thank you, God, for prayer. I thank you, God, that you've made a way for us to get power from you, Lord, um, through prayer. Um, God, I ask right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you stir up the desire to pray. I pray and I release by faith, God, the anointing for prayer. I release, God, a fresh impartation for a prayer life that is intentional for your people. God, I pray against the arrows of the enemy, the wiles of the devil that come to try to steal time from your people um, to interrupt lines of communication with you. And so, God, I pray right now for reinforcement. So I pray, God, I send angels right now to minister unto your people. God, I even ask, God, that the angels that you have assigned to your people, God, will throughout their days, God, just nudge them that you've assigned to them. The angels assigned to them will nudge them to remind them to, to set aside a time to pray. Father, I pray for more supernatural divine activity um, to be uh, heightened in their lives as a result of them praying with you. God, I pray for greater faith greater works, greater miracles and signs and wonders to happen as a result of greater intentional prayer time with you, oh God. I thank you, God, that you're calling us to humble ourselves and pray. And then God, when we seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, you're going to do amazing things in this earth for us. And so we just thank you for that. We love you. We seal this teaching and this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. It is so. Amen. Amen, guys. Thanks for staying on. Most of you stayed on tonight. I'm really excited about this. We had a really good turnout. So please share this video. I'm going to make sure I put this up on my YouTube channel as well so that you can go back and watch it without having to dig through my archives on, on Facebook. So you guys have a wonderful night. I love you. Share the video and go pray. All right. See you guys soon. Bye.